Um, I'm pleased to hear this morning that next year's conference theme will be collaboration, synthesis and innovation. Um, as uh, this this could have uh, talk could have fitted in quite well with that as well. So joining up could have been pulling together equally. So I um, hope this will kind of feed in quite nicely to next year's theme. I'll be able to come back and talk to you a little bit more about what I'm going to say today. Um, so... This is kind of moving from, uh, we've had two, a couple of quite general introductions to uh, digital archiving in Scotland and Wales today, and I'm going to move to, to quite a specific um, few, uh, a topic. So I'm going to talk about joining up a number of systems, projects and people under the auspices of the Herald Project. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about the history of Herald, um, the progress to date, um, before moving on to give an idea of what the new Oasis system will look like. Um, and talk briefly about the ADS library and then outline some of the timescales and roll out for the new Oasis. Um, can I just show of hands, has everybody heard of Oasis? Yes, excellent, talking to the right people. <laughs> um, so the Herald project is a redevelopment of Oasis. Um, and it's been an exercise in joining up sort of several slightly disjointed threads into a strategy to look at the, the who, the what and the how of information handling at a national level. Um, we had a chance to look at our in-house resources as part of Herald, so OASIS um, and what we generally term the Grey Literature Library or formerly the Library of Unpublished Fieldwork Reports. Um, and latterly we've also looked at the British and Irish Archaeological Bibliography which came to us in 2016 from the CBA. Um, We've also been looking at some of the people and groups that these resources were not currently accommodating, um, such as uh, the built historic environment community and museums. So we started thinking about Herald quite a long time ago, um, and things only started to move significantly after the Pi Tate review of the development and impl implementation of Oasis in England. Um, while we're thinking about the Herald project, there were several several other sort of simultaneous initiatives and ideas that began to develop. So in England, the Heritage Information Access Strategy, or HIAS, which you're going to hear a little bit about from Keith and Sarah. Um, and then in Scotland, Archaeology Scotland and Historic Environment Scotland, we're thinking about data gathering for discovery and excavation in Scotland, their publication. And in Wales, the Welsh Trusts were looking at ways that they might archive and disseminate grey literature online. So in stage one of Herald, we were looking, and the early part of stage two, um, was us thinking about how the different needs of those things that were going on and our existing stakeholders and potential stakeholders um, could all be brought together and how we could assess these um, and build something into build a new oasis system that started to accommodate them um, we conducted qu pretty extensive surveys um, workshops and consultations to identify what was needed um, also springing up from some of this work that was happening as part of the Herald project and as part of HIAS, um, we came to the realisation that we we're only talking to a small number of built heritage professionals and that in order for us to build a system for the historic environment rather than just archaeology, we needed to understand more about digital archiving practice and awareness of OASIS amongst architects and architectural historians and related disciplines. Um, so this resulted in something which I've just tacked on the end there, which was we call the Built Legacy Project, which was a survey um, and contacting um, the sorts of people who we never usually talk to, like I say, architectural historians or people working in practices um, without archaeologists who won't necessarily know about Oasis and things like that. I'm not going to go into this specifically today, but there is a project report if anybody's interested in looking at that piece of work. It's available on the Archaeology Data Service blog. So a lot of things to be mindful of. Um, alongside the surveys and the consultations we did, um, there's been a lot of project oversight from the funders, so Historic England, Historic Environment Scotland, um, and our Oasis Management Board, which is comprised of all those people listed there. Um, and we've also tried to communicate via our blog and workshops and presentations at conferences and meetings. So I hope by now you've all had you've seen that we cons we've consulted and you've all had the opportunity to comment it's not quite absolutely too late but nearly <laughs> so uh, don't hold back now <laughs> um why was all this consultation so important um well 
Oasis data currently goes to a lot of places um, and it interacts with a lot of systems. So we needed to ensure that these were links were either maintained or they were improved. And Oasis is essentially a transit lounge for information and reports and feeds out to existing resources such as HERs, the national data sets held by HE and HES, um, but also sort of cross-border resources such as uh, MEDIN, which is the Marine Data Environment Network, um, and the Geophysical Survey Database, so a UK perspective. Um, and we also wanted to do something more ambitious so that OASIS could capture information that would be useful to museums, historic buildings, professionals, as I mentioned, and perhaps specialist recording systems and feed into things like research frameworks, which I'll come on to. talk a little bit now about the things you can expect. So after three years of work, we're kind of almost ready to start building the new Oasis. Um, and here are some of the things you can expect. Um, we're moving from the sort of general to the more specific. So um, we got a lot of feedback from the consultations um, that we needed longer page timeouts and auto saves. Um, records should be always open so they can be edited for mistakes. Um, we wanted to move away from um, uh, the term validation rather um, to the term review because validation carries a connotation in the planning system that is not what OASIS is necessarily intended to do um, and we also wanted to maintain versioning so if we were allowing for repeated edi editing of records then we could roll back if there was a mistake made for example. Um, and these are some of the changes to the records within the form. So. Um, Again, from feedback we received from our surveys, um, we wanted to accommodate much more of the variability that there is out there in the UK archaeology and historic environment sector in, in, in their workflows um, and how they treat data. So, um, for example, one of the things we hope to do is um, allow HERs to start records so they can keep a track of what's going on um, and they'll be retrieved by field workers. Although, if you want to carry on with the status quo, you can do that. Um, we also want to make data entry less onerous so that things like an uploaded boundary file can identify and fill in um, the administrative areas, the HER that covers that area, um, and potentially the museum and archives that might collect from that area at the same time. Um, so, and these are all sort of uh, preset um, things that can be put into the system. Um, Another thing that came back to us was that we need records that can be deleted or marked as duplicates um, and better boundary upload and drawing um, and for Scotland in particular the inclusion of monument locations. The levels of uh, OASIS data collection <laughs> um, are going to change. Um, so again, it's, it's all in, in line with this idea of flexibility. Um, so in in areas, say, for example, where an HER already collects invent information before an OASIS record is created, for example, um, but they recognise the benefits of the Grey Literature Library and digital preservation, um, then they may want to opt out and, and use OASIS Lite, which is what we call the Enhanced Bibliographic Record. Um, in other circumstances, there may be a good case for using the standard um, OASIS. Um, and again, um, in other areas, a good, good case for using um, OASIS Plus, which will feed specialist um, recording systems, for example, geophysics as it does now, or graveyard recording. Yeah. It's probably worth dwelling a little bit more on the difference between OASIS Lite and OASIS Standard, because we get asked this quite a lot. As I said, OASIS Lite, um, it's not just lighter on the information entry that's required but it's also more light touch in terms of the intervention that might be needed from an HER so um, the grey literature report uploaded with an OASIS record for example doesn't need to be reviewed and can move straight to the grey literature library along with the bibliographic information. Um, I've just mentioned the library so I've had to flip back to an earlier a slide um, Currently, when a report's uploaded to OASIS, it goes into the, the Grey Literature Library or Library of Unpublished Fieldwork Reports. Um, but from now on, I hope most people have seen this, um, things will be moving to the ADS Library. Um, and that was launched in a beta version in March. I'll just talk a little bit more about that. Um, 
it's a it's a combined resource so again another thing that talks about joining up of people resources um, and data um, I hope everybody's seen it um, and this is what we spent the majority of 2016 and 17 working on um, it brings together the British and Irish archaeological bibliography from the CBA, um, the Grey Literature Library and the ADS collections of journals, monograph series um, and local journals and published literature all together in the one place. And in case, any, in case anybody hasn't seen it, this is, this is a summary of what's in it. Um, so an awful lot of data. I won't go through it all because we're running out of time. But, um, and these are some of the things that you can download from it. So it takes the database, BIAB, and other data sets that we've amalgamated um, and then links them up so you can go straight to download the information that we hold in our collections. And the goal of bringing this together and enhancing it in the future is create creating a powerful tool not just for sort of searching for bibliographic or textual information but also um, drawing together something that can feed and compile our, um, subsets of this data to feed things like um, research projects or research agendas um, and thematic studies and that's what it looks like <laughs> Um, I'll, I'll end very quickly then with um, the timescale for delivery of some of um, our um, OASIS sort of orientated aspirations. So um, the specification for the new system went to Historic Environment Scotland and Historic England in January. Um, we hope to start development in May once we've agreed the changes that are needed. Um, we have some further developments to plan and hopefully implement this year and next to do with syncing OASIS data with HERs so you don't have so much of this import-export, you have um, a sort of more uh, organic exchange of information between systems so it's current and there's less duplication and we hope that the beta system for the new OASIS will arrive sometime late in 2018. Um, and I'll perhaps stop there but do keep in touch.